We're back with the third biggest story of the year, the economy. It's five years since the economic meltdown began and still New Mexico struggles to emerge from the doldrums of job losses and more recently declining house prices. The state logged another dubious ranking as well, ranking last in the country for child well-being. And Rachel Sams, the New Mexican had a column urging the governor to kind of step out there a little bit. What, what's going on with the economy? that you taking the 35,000 foot view and your staff saying, what is X that we're not doing at this point? Our economy doesn't have enough diversity. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough different kinds of jobs for people with different skill levels, yeah. different industry backgrounds. We're so reliant very much on government jobs. Sure. About a third of our jobs probably come from government. Mm -hmm. um, we're also so reliant on one company with Intel. Right. A third of our exports from Albuquerque Ouch. are semiconductor chips. So we just need to find um, there's some new approaches out there that people are taking. The, um, the mayor's office and the new director of economic development mm -hmm. want to encourage more entrepreneurship here. Mm -hmm. That might be a route for Albuquerque to go rather than trying to throw incentives at a big company to get them to come here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. It's mm -hmm. not going to solve our problem. One of the things that uh, I found amazing in your, your publication, the reporting, was the amount of job uh, labor loss yes. here. Yes. A huge issue, it seems to me. Just under 10,000 we've lost here in the Albuquerque metro in, I think, the last, was it since 2007? Was that the reporting? I can't recall exactly, but statewide it was it was a good number as well. We have seen you know. a lot of um, a lot of labor force attrition. I think 24,000 um, fewer in the labor force right. just over the past quarter, right. um, wow. which was really it's alarming to see. And I think it ties in with something else that we'll be talking about here, which is education. Right. You're mm -hmm. starting to hear the workforce solutions mm -hmm. right. um, talking about that issue, how a lot of workers out there don't have the skills they need, and maybe right. they're having to drop out of the job force because mm -hmm. of it. Right. 2013 seemed like to be the year trip where this stuff really got off the ground. A lot of people are talking about it, certainly. We're having a good argument, certainly, which we should have. But the same question stands. No one's really come out with a plan or an idea yet. Well, you know, it's interesting because that we, we, we touched on some of the legislative uh, things that passed. Mm. That big tax bill mm -hmm. that passed, a lot of the, the, the arguments for it was economic development. Uh, we're giving incentives or, or knocking out, you know, tax credits or whatever mm -hmm. for you know, uh, various corporations and whatnot, and what the administration said was, we need to get in front of people. That's why we need this kind of thing. Right. The downside to doing that is that everybody's trying to get in front of uh, those corporations. Texas, California, mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. Singapore, China, India. We are playing a, a, a global game here. Mm -hmm. So, and education is huge too. Mm -hmm. How do we get uh, a narrative that kind of understands that Asking questions about incentives, you also have to talk about education attainment. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about health care and poverty, as I see it, mm -hmm. uh, because they're all related as far as I Sure. I, Gwyneth, would you agree with that? That's part of the, yeah, the big pie of economic is. development. We know that we have a chicken and an egg problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a problem attracting businesses here because they look at the schools and they say, oh, we, we're not going to attract employees here and companies uh, because they don't want to send their kids to our public schools. Well, and then we, we're not graduating enough students with enough skills to attract those companies mm -hmm. either. Right. It's interesting. I hosted a panel at the Albuquerque Tech Fiesta some months ago about this. A lot of younger entrepreneurs. I think you, some of your folks were there yeah, as yeah. well reporting. And their take on this was a vastly different take from some of the older guard here. Education was important, but as far as business and the economy, their idea was you create wealth first. You know, some wealthy people, then you can start creating some jobs after that. It's a very interesting uh, point of view for New Mexico, though. You don't hear people talking about creating wealth. It's not a thing we talk about a whole lot. Exactly. What's your sense of that? Yeah, you know, that, that sort of gets in the argument the, with the whole planned city in Santa Teresa, ah, right there right. on the border. It's, mm -hmm. it's a planned city. They're trying to develop a border town that is void of all the sprawl that you see in other border towns, right. that is perfectly planned, and that it becomes a, some sort of economic power. It's an alternative to El Paso and Juarez. Right. Uh, that you know, it's a great idea, but it's long term. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it's based on still our old economy yep. of importing and exporting products along the border. Right. Uh, that is needed in southern New Mexico. But what about northern New Mexico? What about sure. central New Mexico? Sure. What other businesses are they offering? Mm -hmm. You know, and also we we talked about the public schools, but there's also an essence of college. What other colleges do we have as an option? You have University of Mexico, and you have other systems and community colleges, but there's no big private school here. There's no Rice University. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, yeah. Harvard of the Southwest. And I think, you know, with this discussion of wealth, yeah. there is this, this sort of this discussion is like, 
where is that savior to come in and start these schools? Right. That hasn't happened yet. That's right. That's interesting. Rachel, back to you to finish this. You know, the idea that we can have wealth in our community mm -hmm. shouldn't be a bad thing. We should all get behind that. But then again, that, that gets into picking winners and losers sometimes. And that's a tricky one for the new economic developer. Mm -hmm. uh, for, you just spoke about he wants to create, well, what kind of entrepreneurs? You see what I mean? What, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And what category? What's going to be viable five years from now? That kind of thing. It's very tricky to try to figure out. One cannot predict, can they? It's very difficult. It is very tricky. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing, thinking about sitting here and talking about the need for wealth, uh, one thing that we don't have a lot of in New Mexico is billionaires, right. like people who That's have right. grown their own wealth right. and could then invest it in other companies, other mm -hmm. startups, other ideas, mm -hmm. create, um, uh, create that kind of economy like you see in the Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. Exactly right. We'll get there. We're going to get there. You watched. This next year is going to be our year for this. Education has been a huge ongoing story this year for the battle over confirming public education secretary Hannah Scandera. Certainly to testing, teacher evaluations, and the social media gas by Albuquerque Public Schools Superintendent Winston Brooks. Got to get that in there. Now, Russell, last year, education didn't make our top ten. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. uh, this year, it's our number two story. What? It, it's, the chickens just come home to roost to make this flip over like this? People just get it now? Yeah. Okay. And, and full disclosure, my wife's a teacher. Okay. I'm a former teacher, too, mm -hmm. in Houston and New York. And you survived. And, and I survived, <laughs> right? But this is a, you know, I, was, I first came to New Mexico nine years ago as the education reporter for the Albuquerque Journal. Mm -hmm. And the same issues that I wrote about then are the same issues we wrote about now. That's right. The same issues George I. Sanchez was talking about 1930 in New Mexico are the same issues now inequality, achievement gap. Right. I think as long as, as all our educational base are based on ideology, we're mm -hmm. not going to get to the root of things. Mm -hmm. And if it's always around what the adults think, teacher evaluation, right. uh, labor issues, uh, whether we should confirm this person or not, and you don't get into what the real action, what's going on in the classroom sure. in terms of this achievement gap, where is a, how, is, how do we get rid of ineffective teachers or ineffective administrators for that matter, which is ne hardly ever discussed. Right. We're not going to get around it. And I think there, there's also a provincial argument that we need to keep our students in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. there, you know, we talk about everything about the lottery scholarship there. There is no push to get them out into Harvard or Columbia right. where they would get, if they went to Harvard, their education would be paid for. Uh, so I, I think as long as we and stay they would there, come back and mm -hmm. they could come That's back right. the possibility right. so you would, and you would have not be, not not to be an elitist but you would have a diversity mm -hmm. of thought mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. until we have that discussion we're going to be around the same thing mm -hmm. 30 years from now good for you I like that a lot early childhood education as well another one that went around the horn this year a whole bunch yeah I mean do we have any movement on that uh, on corking the per, from the permanent fund some money or is that just not going to happen. Er no, I don't think it's going to happen, yeah. but early childhood education is a really hot topic because uh, people see potential there. Yeah. You know, it's easy to show that you can make a big difference in a, in a small period of time. The issue is, you know, we're always on the bottom of these education lists. We're also on the bottom of the poverty list, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the bottom of the insured list and the, and the bottom of the employment lists. You cannot separate student uh, achievement from the fact that they are homeless that they have no health care, mm -hmm. that their parents don't work, they're drug addicts, they're p we have the second highest teen pregnancy rate in the nation, mm -hmm. their parents are teenagers, right. they didn't right. graduate, our dropout rate is so high, right. this is only part of a massive problem that we have. Mm -hmm. We it's, focus mm -hmm. on teachers, sure. because they're the easy whipping right. boy here, and, yeah. I, and I teach at UNM, sure, but, sure. but I'm not part of this, uh, you know. To, to Russell's point you make, you know, yeah. that all these adult discussions about, them. Yeah, exactly. It's much easier to talk about teacher evaluation, That's right. to talk about getting rid of bad teachers, than it is to focus on the root causes of this Right. Problem with success. Mm -hmm. I and also that's propose poverty. another one. Exactly right. Uh, that it's going to be a twenty-year, if not a generational fix. Let's well, put it that way. You know, term. sure, there's absolutely. No question. This is long term, and I wish that actually the politicians would just. You mentioned about people being straightforward. I wish they would just shut up and say, "This is a long-term fix. That's we right. cannot fix it next year that's right. or the year afterwards." Uh, actually, you're talking about early childhood education. That's got to be in a book about some neuroscience research now that's looking at various forms of, you know. Uh, mother-parent kind of connection with child and how statistically those children that have a very strong connection tend to do better. They tend mm -hmm. to really have more grit and, and, and discipline and mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's still developing. There's a lot of research around education. But, you know, to have a mother stay at home is a luxury. The, a, 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 exactly. You know, this and is a luxury many New a, Mexico families Education is a nexus for all the questions that Gwyneth has talked about and Russell has mm -hmm. talked about. And then it comes to business as well. Uh, you, you know, we talked about this with some earlier segments. All roads mm -hmm. lead back to education for business as well. Absolutely. And so, you know, the idea, we've talked about at this table a bunch of times, specialized education for specialized industries. 
we've tried this at CNM and some other places, mixed results, mixed success. Does a business community, would they, are they desirous of that kind of thing, of a, you know what I mean, a very specialized education to, to fit certain needs for certain industries? Is that a possible solution here? I think a lot of people are very interested, and you're starting to see movement in that direction. You see, like, the ACE Leadership High School, oh. which is, it's actually, it's beyond, like, a VOTEC type of education. Right. They're trying to teach these kids the skills they'd need to be an administrator in That's construction right. or something like that. Right. I definitely think you're seeing business people getting so fed up with what they're seeing coming mm -hmm. out of the educational mm -hmm. system that they want to get more involved. Yeah, exactly right. We'll be back in a jiffy with our top story of the year.